All right. <clears throat> Enough of hardware now and their processes. Mm, let's talk some business now. Hereforth, we'll uh, talk about the important logical components of the fabric as uh, you're seeing here the tenants, application profiles, EPGs, and etc. Et and uh, we'll, we'll also understand their importance and purposes during uh, the complete configuration. So, first comes the tenant. Now, let's see what's what uh, this term tenant means so tenant is uh, a logical container for application profiles which helps us to maintain a domain based access control we can give a tenant uh, for department IT where uh, which are given a similar set of prof uh, policies and a different tenant for for maybe sales department the fabric can contain uh, multiple tenants which counts to a limit of about 1,000 to 3,000 of them, uh, depending upon their internal uh, configuration. The only mandatory configuration in the tenant is the name. Uh, rest all can be configured later, if you would wish to go like this. VRF, uh, the virtual routing forwarding. As we all know, uh, it is basically a unique layer 3 forwarding domain containing specific private routes. One or more bridge domains are uh, associated with a VRF. All the endpoints within the layer 3 domain must have unique IP addresses because it might be possible where we, we might want to uh, let two endpoints under the same VRF to communicate with each other. A tenant can contain multiple VRFs. The mandatory and uh, optional configurations under VRF are mentioned on your screen. And their limit is about uh, uh, 400 per tenant um, to a maximum of 3000 in the complete fabric. Application profile. Its uh, scope is under the tenant. It is the place where policies, uh, services, and relationships are defined for a particular group of endpoints. The application profile may contain multiple endpoint groups which are each serving a different set of endpoints. Endpoint group. The endpoint group is a managed object which is a collection of number of endpoints like uh, uh, endpoints I mean and host the host which are connecting directly to the ACI fabric. The endpoint group is the most important object of the of this policy model. So they actually have an address, uh, kind of an identity, a location, uh, their, their attributes like uh, what version, patch level, and they can be uh, physical or virtual, depending upon uh, what server they are installed in. Are they installed on a vCenter? Are they installed on a SCVMM? Or are they installed on a you know bare metal physical server endpoint groups contain endpoints that have common policy requirements and those uh, common policies can be uh, security vmm quality of service l4 to l7 uh, services like this so rather than configuring and managing endpoints individually they are included or placed in an epg and then managing a multiple endpoints under an endpoint group is quite simple. Not, I wouldn't say quite simple, it's rather very simple and it gives uh, management a broader domain. Contract. Uh, contracts, in addition to EPGs, contracts are key objects in the policy model. EPGs can only communicate with each other uh, according to the contract rules only. An administrator uses a contract to select the type of traffic that can pass between the IPGs, including the protocols and the ports as well. If there is no contract, inter-EPG communication is disabled by default. There is no contract required for uh, intra-EPG communication. Intra-EPG communication is always implicitly allowed. What I mean is if there are two hosts and hosts within a same endpoint group you don't need a contract to to let uh, the two machines talk to each other 
but if there is one machine in one EPG and is trying to reach out to another machine in a different EPG, you need a contract. Subjects. Subjects are contained inside contracts. One or more subjects within a contract use uh, filters to uh, specify, the, specify the type of traffic that can be communicated and uh, how it occurs, you know, how, how it's supposed to go. For example, for HTTPS messages, the subject specifies the direction and the filters that specify the IP address type, for example, IPv4, IPv6 or whatever, the HTTP protocol and the ports allowed. So all these things are mentioned inside the filter and subject defines the direction of those filters and this combined forms a contract. Okay. So uh, subjects, uh, you know, it, it can be unidirectional or bidirectional. A uh, unidirectional filter is, uh, is, is used in one direction. So <laughs> Unidirectional filters basically define in and out communication, but is not same for both. That is what it uh, means when we say unidirectional. Unidirectional means if there is a set of rules for ingress, those same uh, uh, those set of rules cannot be same for the egress. That is for the bidirectional filters, where uh, the filters are the same for both. They they define both ingress and egress communications. Filters. Filters, uh, filters are layer 2 to layer 4 uh, fields, TCP IP header fields such as uh, layer 3 protocol type, layer 4 ports and so forth. According to its uh, related contract, an EPG provider dictates the protocol and ports in both in and out directions. Contract subjects contain associations to the filters that are applied between EPGs that provide and consume the contract. When a contract filter match type is on, if in case you are you are using a contract where you know filter, the filter is set to all match type all 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 any any kind of yeah if you remember in ACI it's any to any. So if you are configuring a filter something like that, it is it it would be recommended to rather set an uh, en enforced mode under VRF as unenforced right like uh, okay actually I should have uh, talked about this in, in in upcoming features but now okay uh, when I have said it let's let's talk a little more about it so there is a there is a setting uh, there is a configuration setting under VRF where you can uh, specify if all the endpoints under that VRF should be enforced or unenforced when I say enforced it means you are enforcing the use of contracts for inter EPG communication so if your contract is something like any to any everything everyone can talk to everyone so in that case it is recommended rather than using a filter or contract go for unenforced setting under VRF Unenforced means you don't have to use a contract. Okay, we will get to know about this uh, in, in later sessions. So, okay, uh, that's all I believe for the filter. Hmm, bridge domain. Okay, so bridge domain uh, represents a layer two forwarding construct within the fabric. Uh, bridge domain must be linked to a VRF. Uh, VRF can have multiple bridge domains and it must have at least one subnet associated with this bridge domain and uh, it basically defines the unique layer 2 MAC address space and a layer 2 flood domain if such flooding is enabled under the bridge domain. While a VRF defines a unique IP address space, that address space can consist of multiple subnets. Those subnets are defined in one or more bridge domains that refer to the corresponding VRF. There are there are several configuration settings under a bridge domain which defines how the packet is going to travel inside the fabric. Which uh, and then you can look for those in details in a different course that I'm currently preparing and. It is something I don't want to boast about, but it is something you won't find uh, 
regularly on the internet so um, i'm preparing that i'll, I'll upload uh, that material shortly over the internet and you'll you'll find you can request uh, separate sessions for that if you want so subnets as we were talking about the subnets uh, there should be at least one subnet mentioned under the bridge domain so here we are so the option uh, subnets actually can be you know um, how should I say that uh, the scope of subnets can be defined in three ways the first is uh, the subnet can be public it can be routed to exported to a routed connection and the second option would be the subnet can be private which actually applies that uh, subnet applies only within its tenant and not outside the tenant and the third category comes when uh, a subnet can be defined as shared the subnet can be shared with and exported to multiple vrfs in the same tenant or across different tenants uh, in this in the acf fabric an example of a shared service is a routed connection to an apg present in another vrf in different domain okay let's let's not make it complex I'll, I'll, this will uh, will will get to know when we when we will be doing the l2 out and the l3 outs of the acf fabric domains endpoint groups are considered uh, the who in aci okay so contracts are considered what when and why of the aci aeps can be considered the where of the aci and the domains are considered how of the fabric different domain types are created depending on how a device is connected to the fabric there are uh, four different domain types physical domain uh, external bridge domain the l2 domain external routed domain the l3 domain and the virtual domain uh, also called the vmm domain uh, where where you uh, can include the uh, servers coming in from vcenter or, or microsoft's sc vmm solution for vmm domain so something like that so here here are the uh, domains that i actually was talking about so vlan pool it's just you can consider it as a wear of the aci uh, fabric vlan pools contain the vlans used by the apts the domains will be tied to a domain is associated with a single vlan pool vxlan and multicast uh, address pools are also configurable similar to vlan pools we have uh, vxlan pools and uh, multicast address pools and vlans are instantiated on leaf switches based on uh, aep configuration allow or deny forwarding decisions are based on contracts and policy model not subnets and vlans so whatever uh, coming in from the endpoint group it's it's not uh, uh, judged on the basis of vlan allowed or not or what subnet it's configured for it's done on the basis of what contract uh, that policy has configured with okay aaep I'm sorry I did not mention here it's uh, AAEP is attachable access entity profile or some may say it's simple AEP attachable entity profile and it can be considered as the wear of the fabric correct configuration and are used to group uh, domains with similar requirements APs are tied to the interface policy groups one or more domains can be added to an AEP by grouping domains into AEP and associating them the fabric knows where the various devices in this domain live and uh, the APIC can push the VLANs and policy where it needs to be using the these APICs so uh, AEP so these AEPs are, are really important trust me if you have configured 
everything and you miss a b it's not gonna work it's that critical so ap's are configured under the global policy section under the uh, the main tab the main uh, tab is the policies further going into the access policies and under the global policies we'll find this option attachable access entity profile and aep is required to deploy vlan pools on leaf switches encapsulation blocks are uh, reusable across leaf switches and aep's uh, provides the scope of vlan pools to the physical infrastructure interface uh, policy group Interface policy groups are templates to dictate port behavior and are associated to an AEP. These are also reusable objects as many devices are likely to be connected uh, to ports that will require the same port configuration. There are three types of interface policy groups depending upon the link type. It can be access port, it can be a port channel or a VPC. Now the interface profile. Uh, Interface profiles help tie the pieces together. How? They basically contain the block of ports or interface selectors. Uh, uh, on, on those complete interface selectors, you can bind a common interface policy group. So you can say interface profile is a place or, or is a group of uh, interfaces which are going to have a similar kind of configuration. Interface selector is uh, the this is the place where the interfaces are selected where the interface profile and interface policy group would be mapped or implemented okay it, it selects those interfaces where those policies will be implemented configuration will be applied switch profile a switch profile groups all the interface profiles that define the behavior of its uh, respective switch ports uh, switch profile could be the definition of a single switch or or it could it could be the definition of multiple switches as a best practice uh, there should be a switch profile for each leaf leaf right okay let, let, let me repeat that again as a best practice there should be a switch profile for each leaf right if you have like 10 leaves you should have 10 switch profiles and an additional switch profile for each VPC domain if you are like if you have 10 leaves you have you should have 10 switch profiles but if you have 10 leaves and uh, uh, two VPCs running on four of them switches then the switch profile number should be as per recommended practice 10 plus 2 VPCs right switch selector switch selector is the same as uh, interface selector but instead it uh, selects the switch number where the policies policies will be uh, implemented uh, that is for now for all the policies that we need to configure to to have an end-to-end -end configuration for an end host to communicate with another end host or maybe l3 out or a l2 out or, or to the internet that is all will be used so from the next lesson, we'll understand how all these policies work together.